Good morning. We pray that God will give you strength, healing, and peace. Invite a friend to attend our online virtual worship service every Sunday morning at 10.15 a.m. You can access our virtual worship service through YouTube. The power of giving comes from the heart, and your generosity is greatly appreciated. It will allow us to help families and individuals in need. You can give your donation, tithes, and offerings three ways. For all information regarding the conference call number and code, and for RBC, please visit our website at restorationbible.church. Well, again, it's time for our communion. It's time to have observation of the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Supper commune together. Even though we are uh, physically separated, we are virtually tied together by the blood of Jesus Christ. And today is the time while we are separated, uh, we still have a requirement to commune with the Lord. Commune with the Lord. I want you to remember all that Jesus Christ has done for you. Uh, don't let this pass you by, this opportunity to reflect over your life of all the great things that he has done. Most importantly, because of his sacrifice on the cross, you have a guarantee of eternal life in heaven through Jesus Christ. I want you to go get yourself a piece of bread, cracker, a communion if you still have some pre-made communion or you have uh, some of the wafers that we've sent out uh, our church has been sending those out um, to uh, to the members of the church but now because time keeps going on and on and on trying to teach and show uh, members of the church visitors and friends that the necessity of being in the church house is not really there you don't really need to be there to commune with the lord so whatever you have if it's some water for some, some water or or even some some grape juice that you have or or like i say the pre-made stuff uh communion that we have sent out to you i want you to get that right now I want you to get that and let's all prepare to commune with the Lord together. Let's prepare to commune with the Lord together. While you're doing that, I'm going to read from uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And I think I'm going to start at verse 23, 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. And it says, therefore, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In verse 25 says, In the same manner he also took the cup from supper, and saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, in remembrance of me. And that's what I want to charge you with today, uh, time like now. Remember what Christ has done. Remember what Christ has done. So everybody should have themselves a wafer, a cracker, or, or something that represents the body of Jesus Christ, and something to drink to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you have that, let's consecrate it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to bless and we consecrate these items that we have that represent the body of Jesus Christ and the blood that is shed on the cross for our sins. These are just representations, but we want to now uh, com uh, consecrate them to this time of communion. We lift you up and praise you again for this opportunity in Christ's name. We want every each and every person to look over their minds, their hearts, and their souls and make sure that they can examine themselves to make sure that there is no unforgiveness in their heart because we come to do this with a clean and pure heart as we possibly can. We come to give you praise at this time of more memorial and remembrance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, here we go. This represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was shed for the remission of your sin. Eat. This represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was shed as a sign of the new covenant for the remission of our sins. And often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. Drink. And so there we have it, the simplicity of it, the beautifulness of it, the necessity of it, and the obedience of it. We are communing with the Lord. We have done that. And so thank God for you. I pray that you were blessed by this time together. And never forget that we are, as Christians, we are under some requirements and some responsibilities to always remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this time to, that we set aside intentionally to recognize and remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us. We praise you again for this opportunity. Let us walk in the power now, that power of that blood of Jesus Christ and remembering that he is the one that made that ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us that we can be reconciled unto you. In his name we are praying. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh my God, it's so good to be with you guys today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Pastor Shirley Noble. I'm the co-pastor of the Great Church Restoration Bible Church, where my husband is a senior pastor, Reverend Dr. George Noble. And I'm just really happy to be with you guys today, to be able to share a word that God has given me to give to you. So I'm hoping that this word will encourage and inspire someone. 
Hey, a special hello to Restoration Bible Church people, and then a special hello to the saints that are visiting, joining us today with our online service. I am just so uh, thankful and grateful that you've decided to worship with us today. So uh, sit back and enjoy the message. Amen. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for just uh, using me today to speak to your people. With your mighty word, God, remove me and allow them to see and hear you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, grab your Bibles. You're going to need your Bible. And I want you to turn to the book of Romans. Romans 12 and 2 is where we're going to be coming from today. And it's a very familiar scripture to a lot of people, and uh, especially to Restoration Bible Church. And that's simply because that is our theme scripture, Romans 12 and 2. And it reads, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed, saints. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I'm gonna entitle this message, Just Keep Swimming. Just Keep Swimming. As I go through this message, you'll understand more about that particular title. You know, I love this time of the year, the summertime. It's nice and warm outside. We can go outside and do things and, and just enjoy ourselves. But one place that I really like is the water park. I love to go to the water park. They have a ride called the Lazy River Ride where you get on an inner tube and you just float. There's a current, a very soft current that sort of pulls you through. And you know, you're not going any place in particular. You're just floating down the Lazy River and you're just comfortable and just relax. Again, no particular direction are you going in. And there is no real purpose for this ride, but just to ride. So wherever the current seems to push you, that's where you end up. That's where you end up. And I thought about that current and that pushing, and I thought, you know what? But that's not the way a Christian's life works operates. We don't operate like that lazy river. We don't operate like that at all. Our life is more represented by the fish called a salmon. You guys know salmon. You probably love to eat salmon. Um, I love to eat salmon. And then maybe again, you might be a person who doesn't care for salmon. But the salmon is a particular fish. And there are fish that does not swim with the current, but go against the current swimming upstream. Look, he knows exactly where he's going and he's fighting hard to stay on course. Ain't no lazy river ride going on there. He's, stream, he's actually swimming against a current. Let me share with you a little bit about them and, and see if you don't agree. Okay, that from the freshwater rivers, they go through their normal life cycle as eggs and young fish and eventually live in the sea. That's where they eventually live. They have an instinct to return to their spawning ground hundreds of thousands of miles away. They need to return there for spawning and that takes them up the river, not down the river, but up the river. Their trip back is full of dangers as they swim against the strong currents in the river. So there's all kinds of things. But here's the important thing is that they are swimming with purpose and determination. They are trying to get someplace. They know where they're trying to get. They're jumping upstream to get there. They're jumping up waterfalls. Think about that jumping up a waterfall against all odds many of them eventually reach their spawning grounds and then they're able to lay their eggs so they're they're moving through this water against all odds to make it to where they're trying to get to y'all know where i'm going with that have you ever considered why salmon is so valuable it's a valuable fish it's because of the journey that it has to take to be successful that is probably why they are very thick fish. The meat in that is very thick. And that's because the struggle makes them stronger. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? Do you hear what I'm saying? That struggle makes them stronger. Not only is the trip upstream against the current, but it also involves fighting off 
natural obstacles like rocks and branches and and just think about you know if they're in an area where there's bears they have to try to protect themselves from all of these obstacles that want to take them out come on now you hear what i'm saying trying to take them out salmon and other fish swim upstream for the benefit of future generations they swim with purpose they know that the future generation depends on them and that swim upstream. I am saying all this to encourage someone today who has found themselves slipping back into old ways or facing temptations. I want to encourage you today to keep hanging in there. Keep swimming forward. Keep moving forward in spite of the things that are trying to take you back down the stream. Make sure you keep swimming. So just like the salmon, we as Christians are swimming against the current of life trying not to conform to the old ways of life that God has saved us from. He saved me, he saved you from that old way of life. We can't go back. And what happens to the salmon who make it past the bears, the eagles, the fishermen? What do they want, do they do when they get upstream? It's an incredible story of the determination, saints, that they have and we too must have as Christians as we live this life, as we continue to go through this life. As a Christian in this river of life, pursuing Christ requires, it requires swimming upstream. It requires that. When we stop swimming or actively following him, we automatically begin to be swept downstream. The minute we start swimming with the stream is the minute we get lost in the current of this world. And that's what we're not, we don't want that to happen. We want to continue to go in the direction that we know God wants us to go and that he's trying to take us in that direction. We have to be determined just like the salmon. The current of this world is very strong against anyone who resolves to follow Christ. Believe that. Believe that today. It's a very strong current that is sweeping across the face of the earth, a current of wickedness, a current of immorality, and of just blatant sin. That's what we're, we're, we're trying to go against that. We're trying to stay out the way of that current that's trying to pull us in that direction. As we swim upstream against the current of the world, there may be much debris in our way, and much debris and things that are trying to take us out. And we need to discern what is of God. We need to be able to do that. We can only do that by being in the word, knowing the word and knowing the word of God for yourself and rightly dividing the word as it says in 2 Timothy 2.15. So when the current gets too strong and the stresses start pulling up, I, I tell you, there, let, me, let me give you a few tips. Let me give you a few tips when that begins to happen to you. First is swim with other saints. Don't be alone. Don't go out in the water alone like that. This is why God has put us together so we can stay together. Ecclesiastics 4, 9, and 10 says two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed if one fails and the other then the other can reach out and help them but someone who falls alone is in real trouble real trouble other saints you need to have them in your life you need them for encouragement and you know what you need to be an encouragement to them as well so that you can help one another just keep swimming just keep swimming and then don't let fear get in your way isaiah 41 and 10 says do not fear for i am with you do not be dismayed for i am your well we pray that you are enjoying the message thus far we wanted to pause for a minute to to say thank you for joining us today i'm the reverend dr george e noble senior pastor restoration bible church I want to thank you for joining us today but I wanted to pause for a minute and as we say in our church it is blessing time and the church would say it's time to give we'd say it's blessing time you'd say it's time to give and we 
can say a third time is blessing time. It is time to give. We're asking each and every one of you to prepare yourself for gift on today. Not only members of our church, but each and every one of you that are listening, hearing this message today, seeing me today. We're asking you to join in with us in this time of giving. I know we've gone through some months and some months of dealing with this virus and COVID-19 and everything, but we need to uh, fire up our giving again inside of the church. We need to fire up our giving inside of the church. If you're watching your member of another church, uh, we encourage you to give to your church first. But uh, if you're if you're watching and you're a member of Restoration Bible Church, uh, we ask that you get let's get back in line with our, our tithes and our offering. Let's get back to doing what God uh, tells us to do. Be good stewards with the gifts that He has given us. So I want to challenge you today. Uh, as we pause in the middle of the message, uh, that you think about it. Think about what you have been giving to your church, what you've been doing for your church. You still have light bills, water bills, and gas bills, and security, and cleaning, and maintenance that we still have to take care of our facilities, our building. But we want to challenge you today. Think about it. Look in your checkbooks. Look on uh, your cash app. Look on your history of uh, uh, your PayPal, what you've been giving to your church. Have you been giving? Have you been a good steward? Or have you just been seriously just taking care of yourself, spending money on what you wanted to do? Well, I, I'm here before you real quick. I want you to think about uh, your church. We're in need. We're in desperate, desperate need of your tithes and offering continuously. That's how we keep the church moving on. The faithful giving of faithful members. So today I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Give. Give as God has given to you. Your church just needs it. And I'm standing in the gap now saying, hey, we, we've gotten through this now. It's time for me to open up my checkbook, open up my bank account and start giving again, giving to my church. And again, if you're a member of another church, give to your church. But after you've done that, consider giving to Restoration Bible Church. We have several ways to give electronically. Uh, we have our cash app which is dollar sign RBC 2003. Again, electronically, you can give via Cash App. Uh, that's dollar sign RBC 2003. Then we even have it so that you can text your gifts, gifts in, uh, your tithes, your offering, your gifts on the day. You can text them in by dialing 206-923-9899. Again, 206-923-9899. 9899. And then you can give through PayPal. Got you covered. If you want to give, there's a means and a method that you can give. You can give through PayPal and you can send that through our PayPal account at that is RBC Donations at gmail.com. Again, RBC Donations at gmail.com. That's the PayPal. That's how you can give to us uh, that way. And then on at our online uh, uh, website, you can give online uh, through our website, which is restorationbible.church. Again, online, restorationbible.church. So there's really no excuses for you not to give. Uh, electronically, even you don't even have to leave out of your house. You can give to your church. And then for those who want to send checks, money orders, or send us donations uh, to our church, you can send them to Restoration Bible Church. That's Restoration Bible Church, P.O. Box 78003. P.O. Box 78003, Seattle, Washington, 98178. So I want to uh, challenge you now. I want you to ask yourself, why have you not been giving? Why have you not been giving? Come on, come on, come on. Answer the question, why have you not been giving? I thank God for those who have been so very faithful over these last few months and have been just uh, still doing the things that you're supposed to be doing with your tithes and offering, mailing them in, texting them in. We thank God so very much for you. But now for those that have not, we want to challenge you. Come on, let's see what you can do for for the Lord and let's see what the Lord will do for you in the area of tithes, offering, and your gifts. God bless you. Thank you. Now, we're going to move you back into the message. We pray that you enjoy it. You're challenged now, but listen to the message. Enjoy it. Thank God for you and praise the Lord. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Let's face it, you probably won't drown because you're strong, you're resourceful, and you're ambitious, and that will take you a long way. So the worst case scenario is that you end up downstream and you have to start over again. No big deal. God is with you. Just keep swimming. Don't stop swimming. And then remember to call on Jesus. Psalms 18 and 16 says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Never lose sight of the goal and your purpose. Don't lose sight of that. Always have that in your view. Just keep swimming towards that. Just keep swimming towards that. This world is passing away. Don't be swept away with it. Keep swimming upstream, but not alone with Jesus. Amen. With Jesus, we must keep swimming with Jesus. The text literally reads, don't be conformed to this world. Why? Because this world is coming to an end soon. And when it does, everything about this world will crumble to dust. I promise you, I promise you, we don't know when, but we know that it's coming and we know that it's coming soon. So no matter what gets in your way, don't stop swimming. When your money gets short, don't stop swimming. When you can't pay your rent, don't stop swimming. When your kid goes to jail, don't stop swimming. When you get laid off from your job, don't stop swimming. We must be focused. We must continue to keep swimming upstream against all obstacles because we have a destination. We have a destination in sight. Oh, hallelujah. I thank Jesus for that destination. I thank him for saving me. And I pray that he has saved you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, sometimes it can be hard. It can be hard when we are swimming, God, and we know good and well that we need to have you with us all the time. So strengthen us right now. Be our guide. Be our strength. Be our, our, our inner tube that we float on. Jesus, we thank you right now. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So some of you may not know this man named Jesus. And I want to introduce him to you. I want you to know that it's very simple and it's very easy to get to know him today and to have a relationship with him. The first thing you must do is admit that you are a sinner. Admit that your sin has turned you away from God. He doesn't want to look upon sin. So admit that you're a sinner and then believe. Believe that he lived, he died, he was buried, he rose, and he is alive today just for you, just because of you. He loves you that much. And then you must confess him. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, he can do some great things in your life when you do that. He can do some mighty things in your life. You won't be trying to go against the current alone. You have help. And so I ask today that if that is you that needs Jesus in your life, that you have listened to what I've had to say and that it's very easy to accept him and to be able to move through your life as a saved person. I, I thank God for you. Bless you today. Keep strong in the word of God. Amen. A few reminders before you go. Giving generously helps us help others in need. And we have three ways you can give. If you would like to bless our pastors with a pastoral donation or love gift, you can send it through their cash app.
for the conference call number and code, or for more information about RBC, please visit our website at restorationbible.church. God bless, be safe, and we will see you soon.